Welcome back, guys, to another session of Study to Show Thyself Approved. To all who are beloved of God, called to be saints and set apart for a sanctified life, grace to you and peace. Today I want to study scriptures that deal with mixture in the church. What is mixture? Does God care about mixture? How do we identify mixture within our lives? Let's pray before we get started. God, thank you for being an awesome, wonderful, and glorious God. Thank you for the gift of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Fine-tune our hearing, Holy Spirit. Bless us going in and bless us going out. Protect us from the wiles of the enemy in these last days. Reveal all mixture that we see and that we don't see. The hidden things in our heart, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, reveal it. Amen. Today we will finish up with part two of mixture in the body of Christ. So let's start with Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 11. Verse 11 goes on to say, Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary, having charge at the gates of the house, and ministering to the house. They shall slay the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people, and they shall stand before them to minister unto them. So these strangers that were allowed to enter into God's sanctuary, they have been given authority at the gates of the house. Those who do not have circumcised hearts, the ones who serve their idols, they are standing before God's people to minister unto them, or in other words, feed them the word of God or their version of the word of God. Verse 12 says, because they ministered unto them before their idols and caused the house of Israel to fall into iniquity, therefore have I lifted up mine hand against them saith the Lord God, and they shall bear their iniquity. Verse 13 says, And they shall not come near unto me to do the office of a priest unto me, nor to come near to any of my holy things in the most holy place, but they shall bear their shame and their abominations with which they have committed. So here God is clearly saying that these people will not come close to him. They will not be in the office of leadership unto God, nor come near his holy things. They are to bear shame and their abominations, which they have committed. Verse 23 goes on to say, and they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane and cause them to discern between the clean and the unclean. So our church leaders should be teaching the body of Christ the difference between what is holy and what is profane. The holy in Hebrew translation refers to Strong's H6944, and it says sacredness, separateness of place of things. The phrase and profane in the Hebrew translation refers to Strong's H2455, and it says profaneness commonness, unholy, profane place. So we already defined holy in detail earlier in verse eight. However, let's dive deeper into what profane means. Miriam says profaneness means to treat something sacred with abuse, irreverence, or contempt. Contempt means that you have a state of mind to despise something or look down upon it. So here we are learning that there are things that we should look down upon with irreverence or contempt because it is profane. The body of Christ should be discriminatory. Commonness means it falls below standards and lack of refinement. The Bible makes a clear distinction between holy and profane things, between what is sacred and what is common between what is ceremonially unclean and what is clean. So Leviticus chapter 10 verses 1 and 2 says, And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord. 
which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. God consumed Nadab and Abihu for something as simple as burning fire. God gave them specific instructions on how they were to prepare the incense before the Lord. So when they deviated from that, God consumed them. And this is what people don't understand. Yes, something that simple as burning fire before God, strange fire, will consume you. And so, yes, that means something as simple as yoga. Practicing yoga is strange unto the Lord and it is mixture because it originated in a Hindu religion. It is a pagan practice and we as children of God or the body of Christ are not supposed to participate in pagan practices. It is profane before God. If it did not originate with Jesus Christ, then it originated outside of Jesus Christ. Anything outside of Jesus Christ is wicked and is the brainchild of Satan. That is just one example in scripture where we see that following God's precepts to the letter of the law is important. The bottom line is if you are not following God's precepts, then you are in sin. Now that we have defined what is holy and what is profane, what standards have your pastors or leaders communicated to you across the pulpit as a standard set by God based upon scripture? Most Christians today say holiness is outdated, so the church needs to be progressive. That saying comes straight from the pit of hell, and it is deceiving many. Scripture tells us that God's word is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So when I hear people in the church saying that the church needs to be progressive, I question where this idea came from, and I wonder why they have adopted this into their faith. Anytime you engage in practices that will hinder your salvation and send you to hell, the idea originated with Satan. Ezekiel chapter 44 Verse 24 goes on to say, And in controversy they shall stand in judgment, and they shall judge it according to my judgments, and they shall keep my laws and my statutes in all mine assemblies, and they shall hollow my Sabbaths. And here we hear God tell Ezekiel that he has laws and statutes in all of his assemblies, and that we should allow his we should hollow his Sabbaths, meaning to keep them holy and set apart. What's the difference between a law and a statute? The phrase, my laws, in the Hebrew translation refers to Strong's H8451, and it says direction and instruction, law, a body of prophetic teaching. The phrase, my statutes, in the Hebrew translation refers to Strong's H2708, and it says something prescribed, an ordinance, a statute, or a limit. Deuteronomy chapter 12 goes on to explain that we should not participate in pagan practices. Let's look at verses 29 through 32. When the Lord God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whether thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed to yourself that thou be not snared by following them, after that they be destroyed from before you, and that you inquire not after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. For every abomination to the Lord, which he hated, have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt in the fire to their gods. What thing soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add to it, nor diminish from it. Have you ever asked yourself what is a pagan practice? Anything or practice that goes against God's laws is a pagan practice. A pagan in Hebrew translation refers to the phrase, 
the foreign, and it is Strong's H5236, which means an alien, strange, or foreign. It goes on to denote foreign as vanity. Interesting that the Hebrew translation lists pagan as foreign vanity. Vanity is something that is valueless or empty. So pagan practices are valueless and empty before God. One other act that I want to mention that is running rampant in the church is the term Christian witches. I'm not sure how this crept into the mind and the hearts of the people, but the Old Testament explains to us God's nature and his characteristics. So Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 through 12 in the Amplified Version addresses witches, uh, occultists, spiritists, all at the same time. So verse 9 says, when you enter the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to imitate the detestable, repulsive practices of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire as a sacrifice, one who uses divination and fortune telling, one who practices witchcraft. The word witchcraft is in scripture or one who interprets omens or a sorcerer. Verse 11, or one who casts a charm or spell or a medium, and you know, we see mediums all over the internet, all over Hollywood. Famous people are getting mediums to tell them about their past. So all, God hates it. He says it's repulsive. He says, or a spiritist, or a necromancer who seeks the dead. For everyone who does these things is utterly repulsive to the Lord. And because of these detestable practices, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. So that means these people should not be in our churches. They should not be in our friendship circles. God says they are repulsive. So this is profane before God. Yoga originated in Hinduism. So we as the body of Christ should not participate in yoga. What is the origin of burning sage? Indigenous tribes burn the herb in spiritual ceremonies to cleanse, purify, and pray. Indigenous means relating to the earliest known inhabitants of a place, and especially of a place that was colonized by a now dominant group. Just because a group is the first known inhabitants of a place does not mean that religious practices are approved by God. This is the problem that I have with many people who promote going back to serve the God of their ancestors. God did not give Moses the Ten Commandments until man had been on earth for thousands of years. So the original indigenous people were not even aware that they were in disobedience to the one true living God. Why? Because God had not given civilization his laws. Without the law, you don't know if what you are doing is pleasing or displeasing the Lord. The laws were handed down by God to Moses because God wanted a people set apart and holy unto himself. That's why the laws were developed. These laws were given to his chosen people so that means that everyone on earth did not receive those laws. However, when Jesus died on the cross, the Gentiles were adopted into God's kingdom. Christ Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law and now we can partake in his redemption and salvation. Today, anyone who is pricked in their heart and confesses their sins before God and accepts him as their Lord and Savior will be saved from a burning hell. That means you agree to abide by his laws. Some of our ancestors did not adopt the law of Jesus Christ. They continued with their pagan practices. So what are some of those practices? Sacrificing children or people to their gods, burning sage, worshiping marine spirits or water spirits, worshiping the sun, worshiping the land or the air, channeling their god for strength. Hinduism has its practices 
and those practices feed their God. Buddhism has its own practices and rituals that originated with their God and their belief system. Those practices cannot be adopted into the body of Christ because they are not a part of God's law. It's pagan in nature and therefore it's strange before God. Why? Scripture teaches us in Haggai chapter 2 verses 10 through 14 that holiness cannot be transferred, but that which is defiled can be transferred. So if we are living a holy life and we indulge in defiled pagan practices and try to make those practices holy by calling it Christian, whether it's Christian yoga or Christian witchcraft, only the defiled practices will transfer onto us. So you will receive the reward of that pagan practice and nothing holy will be transferred from you, only strange fire. This strange fire can affect other people. And when that happens, you will be leading them astray. When someone involves other Christians in yoga, that Christian will receive the penalty of being involved in a pagan practice from Jesus Christ and not the reward of holiness. The Bible teaches us that many people perish for lack of knowledge. So your argument that you didn't know these things when you stand before God on judgment day will not save you. This is why we study to show ourselves approved before God. There are many other pagan practices going around that we as the body of Christ should not participate in. Like people burying themselves in the earth in order to connect with what they call Mother Earth. People nowadays are saying they are receiving instructions from the universe when the Bible teaches us that Holy Spirit is our teacher. God created the universe, so we should be receiving instructions from the creator, not from the creation using sage and crystals to cleanse the atmosphere. When the Bible teaches us that God is all powerful, he created principalities and powers. He lifts them up and pulls them down. So we should be looking to Jesus Christ for deliverance instead of crystals or using divination to call up spirits for help. All of these things that I mentioned are what I see being used to confuse the body of Christ. We cannot get involved in what the world is doing because we serve a God of laws and statutes. Because a lot of Christians have adopted the theology that they can do what they want because God is love. They are living by how they feel and their senses. They are deceived because their leaders are also involved in these practices or are simply caught up in mixture. The scripture teaches us that the road to salvation is narrow, so we have to get off of the wide path. Whenever I see a lot of people jumping on board to become involved in something that seems too good to be true, I question it because the scripture teaches us that the road to salvation is narrow. When there are a lot of people walking on the road to engage in activities, I get off of that road and I question what is happening with my whole heart. I am usually not wrong when I get off because the issue usually reveals itself over time to be something that I should not be involved in because it leads to destruction. At this moment, millions of people are in an uproar over Target putting LGBTQ plus themed products front and center in their stores. However, I saw this degradation coming years ago and I stopped shopping there. When Target adopted the philosophy that transgender males should have access to female restrooms, I stopped shopping there completely. I stopped shopping there for the safety of my children and for my safety because I could see the road of depravity they were creating for themselves. Once you allow sin a foothold in your life, it will take over. We see this happening today. I fully expected to see LGBTQ attire front and center in Target stores and advertised to our children because that's what sin does. It depraves, it degrades. In situations like this, only Holy Spirit can guide you into a right decision. Because I stopped shopping at Target years ago, I don't have to adjust to the outrage that everyone is feeling now. 
the body of Christ is not supposed to support people or companies that promote pagan practices or encourage or participate in sinful, morally degrading acts. It's just that simple. Thank you for sharing your time with me today. You could have tuned into any other channel, but you chose to spend your time with me, so I appreciate you. I pray that this study session was helpful and blessed your spirit. If this video was helpful to you, please like it, share it with someone else who you believe will benefit from this study session, and if you enjoy these study sessions, subscribe to my channel. Until next time, God bless you and your family, and may God's peace be with you.